Hey guys, so this week I've been struggling to survive in post-apocalyptic Russia with Metro Last Light. It's actually the sequel to a game that came out a couple of years ago, but obviously, new game, they threw a bunch of money at it. The last game had a bunch of problems, you know, it was a little buggy, but it developed this really big cult following. So, is this one worth getting? Have they improved enough of it to make you want to go out and get it? Is it still this weird niche thing, or is it something that everyone should enjoy? Well, here's my opinion. In 2010, a tiny game studio from the Ukraine released a game called Metro 2033 based off a very popular Russian science fiction novel of the same name. Its sales weren't amazing, but it quickly gained a really strong following, so here we are a couple of years later with the sequel called Metro Last Light. The game takes place in a post-apocalyptic Russia where nuclear weapons have destroyed the surface of the planet and humanity just lives in the underground metro tunnels. And interesting enough, the last game actually had a bad and a good ending, depending on the choices that you made. And because Eastern Europeans are some depressing bastards, the sequel presumes that you actually got the bad ending on your playthrough and continues the story from there. Long story short, in the last game you discovered a race of monsters called the Dark Ones, who really only wanted to help humanity survive and thrive in this post-apocalyptic world, and you blew them all up anyways. Now, months later, reports have surfaced that there may actually be one living Dark One left, so your job is to travel through the various sewers and metro tunnels and even the irradiated surface to try and find this last surviving Dark One. Not only do you have to deal with the environment trying to kill you, but you also have to contend with all of the mutated and irradiated wildlife that has taken over the surface of the planet. I already have to deal with hobos playing terrible pan flute music outside of my metro station, so this is actually a nice change of pace for me. And it's not just crazy mutant dragon monsters that you have to deal with either. You get to fight the most dangerous game. Man. What's that? Oh, you, you get to fight a 10 foot tall crazy crab monster? You get to fight the second most dangerous creature. Man. As the old adage goes, War never changes. And that certainly is the case with Metro Last Light. Despite barely surviving nuclear winter together, humanity is still fighting. People have broken off into various factions like communists and Nazis and bears, oh my, and are now on the brink of war once again. This means you get to spend a lot of time reducing the already dwindling population of humanity by great strides as you shoot, stab, and explode your way through the game. Continuing the tradition from the last game, you can go in guns a-blazing or you can sneak your way through the combat with humans. Hiding in the shadows, secretly taking out guards with silenced weapons or throwing knives, or yeah, just slitting their throats from behind. The game is also not all balls-to-the-wall action all the time. Between the fights with monsters and men and the treks across surface or cart rides through the metro, you will sometimes have time to just explore the stations people live in. There isn't a lot to see or do there, and mostly what you're doing is walking around listening to NPCs talk to each other, but it does a great job of showing off the world of Metro Last Light. One of the things that also persists from Metro 2033 is how linear this game is. It's almost aggressively linear sometimes, because a lot of the times you'll have an NPC leading you through the game. This means sometimes you'll be running ahead of your NPC and have to wait for him to catch up in order to trigger certain events. It's only really a minor annoyance, as are some of the bugs in the game, but after playing through the entirety of it, I haven't found anything all that crazy to warrant me mentioning. Yeah, um, maybe you should mention that this game was clearly built with a PC in mind and only parted over to the console, so... Yeah. What the hell? Get out of my room! No! The world wants no! Bad game journalism! Bad game journalism! How the hell do these PC game elitists keep getting into my goddamn room? Ugh. Anyways. One thing worth mentioning is that the game's Ranger Mode difficulty, which diehard fans really crave, is only available to people who pre-order it or people who buy it as DLC. I don't know if this is the first time a game's difficulty mode has been held hostage behind a paywall before, but the practice is very unsettling to me. Despite that, the whole package of the game works pretty well. It's fun from beginning to end, it doesn't change too much from the last game, but it adds enough to make it a pretty decent sequel. I really did enjoy my time with Metro Last Light. I like it because it's not, you know, generic brown shooter, you know, destroy the terrorists, they set up up the bomb, you know, it's, it's a little weird, you know, it's post-apocalyptic monster radiations, but also ghosts and weird stuff, psychics, I don't know, it's, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's developed in Kiev and the Ukraine, because I think those guys, you know, them, the guys who do The Witcher, just that sort of area, they do things a little differently, which is cool, so if you're a fan of shooters, but you're looking for something, you know, a little weirder, then maybe pick this up. It's still, at its core, it's a really solid shooter, but it's got a little bit different stuff in there, but if you're the kind of person that hates weird stuff, maybe avoid this, but I really liked it, and I think you might enjoy it if you pick it up. 